Metallica Man of War Marathon coming to you from Germany. Now, a little earlier in the show, we were partying with Man of War to celebrate the release of their limited edition box set, Secrets of Steel. But right now, it's time to turn our attention to the mighty Metallica. On the 22nd of November, the band released a limited edition CD and video box set entitled Live Shit, Binge and Purge. Now this phenomenal package features three live videos, a triple CD, a Metallica logo stencil, a 72 page booklet, a pass to their snake pit. Of course, it's a real collector's item. So who better to tell us about it than Metallica themselves? We're now going to bring you an exclusive report from San Francisco from the studios where Metallica mixed the soundtrack to the home video and the live CD. So over to Metallica. Kick-ass live project, man. Nine hours, man. Strap yourself in. You film some good shit. <laughs> What's going on is that that basically this project that started out as as this kind of like let's do a, a live type of video from the from the last tour has turned in to this kind of make a project that is, is now the biggest thing that that we've ever been involved in. Take it away, well, the action is. James is just listening to if he's singing a tune or not. It has nothing to do with the project. Well, the plant here in uh, Sausalito is, uh, is basically the center of operations. <laughs> but we got one room Seattle, uh, the other room's Mexico City, the other one's San Diego trying to mix three different things at the same time. The uh, 70s vibe. Yep. And then we go in here. See in here, he does all these, he does, this is where he just edits the songs together. What are you doing, pre or printing samples or something? Something like, like that. He prints samples also, mm -hmm. like kick, snare, and samples. Kicks. So this, Listen to that kick. Yeah. Prince cake samples and stuff like that. It's it's very big. Over here, that's the, right. the board. You basically got three full gigs. One, you know, one from the Justice tour up in Seattle, um, and two from the last tour. One early in the tour, one late in the tour. Two on video, one on CD. You figure it out. It says on the package. This is where we mix Mexico City. But you know what? The guy, Mike Fraser, that's mixing Mexico City, he's uh, temporarily not here, but I'm sure he'll be back real soon. In the big kick-ass book <laughs> with all kinds of stuff that no one really should see. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> or probably <laughs> wants to see. Right. <laughs> Come on. Welcome to Seattle. This is the Seattle room. This is a, uh, this guy's name is Jim. He's got the video up there and he sits and tweaks in all the audio. He sits here and goes a little more of this and a little more of that and a little more drums. A little less of everything else. And, <laughs> no. Yeah, I mean, it's good to have him a little cutting, but just you know, his frequency's cut. So maybe even them out just a little bit. Running back and forth, approving stuff, trying to figure out where you are. Very confusing. We've lost total track. It's all one big blur. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back on tour. <laughs> Down in L.A. at the moment, uh, we've got both of the guys that are doing each of the videos, Michael Solomon doing the Seattle stuff, and uh, Wayne Isham doing
doing San Diego stuff. They're down there editing their hearts away down there and sending up tapes every couple of days and approve this and check this out and what about this effect and blah, blah, blah. Check and this out. Metallica. Check it out. We got this. These are all the images. Look. Metallica. We don't have enough tapes. Look. Metallica. 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 Metallica everywhere. Metallica. Metallica. It's enough to make me weep. Metallica, look, look. See? Metallica. Down. Metallica. <laughs> we have 83.5 hours of film that we shot to get this right here. Two and a half hours. Another ratio seems to be a little out of whack, but we wanted to make sure we got every expression, every innuendo, every drop of sweat, every head-banging element that is the essence of Metallica. This is two nights in San Diego, so uh, which is a luxury in, in concerts that we are able to get when we get our shit together on the second night. But two, it created an atmosphere that we didn't have to surround the band with you know 30 cameras and all the coverage. I, I prefer to have less cameras and more time to shoot the guys because you know every day is going to have a different spontaneity. It's going to have a different energy. So we are lucky in that sense. Instead of having you know one video guy and one audio guy come in and do the whole thing, that we thought that it would be nice to kind of put some different flavors, some different vibes on all the different gigs and the different atmospheres and attitudes and so on. So we got three different guys mixing the three audio segments and two different guys doing the two video segments. So you basically got five different guys putting their individualities on, on what's going on. We're compiling the two concerts here uh, at the company. We shot with eight cameras, two nights, and we did one night that was just uh, a crane on stage shooting drummer shots. I'm really excited uh, to work on this project. Actually, uh, I was quite surprised when they called me. I called them maybe every two months for a year and a half after we shot it. I was waiting for them to give me the, the go-ahead to start. Um, and then three years later, about uh, two and a half months ago, they just gave me a call and I was uh, very happy that we finally got to finish it. Because I think it actually turned out really well. Both are full full of energy, but they're two different kind of uh, 
kinds of energy. One's more of a, a bigger, bigger kind of place, and the other one is really a, little, a lot more up close, sweaty kind of kind of vibe, which is the Seattle stuff. Is that all you get? It's in a road case. It's in a road case, man. Actual road case. It got washed, so it shrunk. <laughs> it's one of Kirk's guitars. <laughs> <laughs> we basically came up with the idea of, of dumping all the different gigs and all the different things basically into like a, a Metallica type of road case. Chocked full of metal. Hey, but wait, you also get a stencil. Don't answer yet. <laughs> How much would you pay for this? <laughs> Jason and Kirk are uh, probably Betty by by now. It's, uh, it's getting rather late. I'll be in tomorrow to pick up the tapes. How's it going in there? What's it sound like? I'll be in tomorrow to pick up the tapes. Did Kirk pick up the tapes? No. <laughs> to answer your question, then, Kirk and Jason are out somewhere having a life right now. Drinking, partying. We're almost done, and new stuff is coming in. In boxes, we're getting more stuff. I can't believe it. There's way too much Metallica stuff. There's a, yeah, there's a, there's a video from San Diego. There's a video from Seattle. There's uh, three CDs from uh, Mexico City. There's a booklet with all kinds of crap in it, pictures and photos and documents and crap you shouldn't ought to see. And uh, also, you get a little stencil of the scary guy, which has kind of become our logo logo for over the last couple of years or something so you get to go stencil your school or whatever you should not do also so there's way too much stuff for even the greatest metallica fan man <laughs> There you go, that was our exclusive report from San Francisco featuring Metallica mixing the soundtrack to the live CDs and home video as part of their live shit binge and purge collection. Over nine hours of Metallica music featured in that very battered flight case box. A brilliant presentation there from the band. Now, as I said, they are limited edition flight cases, but as ever, it's big November for you, and we have a big competition to go with it. We have five live shit binge and purge box sets to give away for you tonight. And to enter the competition, all you have to do is tell us the name of the box set. Not too difficult, is it? Anyway, you certainly don't need to be over 18 to enter, so get your entries in. That is Metallica Competition, MTV's Headbangers Ball, PO Box 1384, London, NW1, 8UH, and that's in England. So do get your entries in if you want to stand a chance of winning that exclusive Metallica box set, a collector's item of a lifetime. Right, we're going to take another short break on the Headbangers Ball Metallica Man of War Marathon. After that, we are going to be revealing the brand new fan club addresses for Metallica. They've just set up some new fan clubs. We're going to show them to you right after this short break, so stay tuned. Welcome back to the Headbangers Ball Metallica Man of War Marathon. We are coming to you from Germany. And you just saw Armored Saint featuring vocalist John Bush, who of course is now in Anthrax. And Anthrax are currently on tour in Europe as I speak. And having seen them in the States playing live, I would definitely recommend you check that tour out. Anthrax supported by Clawfinger. Anyway, our Man of War Metallica Marathon continues now with more Metallica. And uh, we get loads of letters into Headbangers Ball and uh, all you Metallica fans out there have been asking us for a Metallica fan club address. 
Now, up to now, there hasn't actually been a proper Metallica fan club, but all that's changed. They've set up several fan clubs around Europe. And right now, let's have a look at those addresses that you can write to to join the Metallica fan club. addresses where you can write to Metallica several of them set up across Europe as you saw and if you didn't have a chance to write the addresses down just then you can check them out on page 280 of MTV text on the headbangers ball section now tonight in our man of war Metallica marathon we have been celebrating the release of the Metallica box set live shit binge and purge over nine hours of Metallica live and here are just a few minutes of them here's an exclusive performance Headbangers Ball bringing you an exclusive live performance excerpted from Metallica's live shit, binge and purge, box set, video collection, CDs, you name it, it's in that little flight case. And uh, we're going to continue now with a look at some of the highlights of Metallica coverage on Headbangers Ball. Of course, the band have been out on the road on tour for over two years in support of the Metallica album and uh, Headbangers Ball caught up with them on several occasions. Let's see some of those highlights when we went into the snake pit and all that kind of thing. And then after that, we're going to have a short break and we'll be back with the Metallica rockumentary. So stay tuned if you can stand the pace. We spent a few days with Metallica during rehearsals in Peoria, and here's a full preview of one of the most anticipated tours of the season. The byword for Metallica's new tour is innovation, and they're not kidding. There are several features to the evening with Metallica that are not your typical concert fare. First thing, instead of an opening act, Metallica will show a half-hour documentary on the history of the band. I think the night of Metallica, or whatever it's going to be called, is a, is a cool idea. And incorporating video with history of the band, especially at this point, I think we have a lot of newer fans that don't really know a lot about the early stuff. So it, it will be nice for them to kind of understand what Metallica is about. When Metallica takes the stage, it's a stage in the form of an arrowhead. There are front row seats on each edge and an audience pit right in the middle of all the action. There's a drum set on either side, and the band is surrounded by microphones. James could be doing a lead vocal from this point over here. I could be doing a backing vocal from here. Kurt could be doing a solo on, because he has pedals all over the stage. Could be doing a wah thing over from this corner, and there's two drum sets. Usually there's just one up on one side, and then it moves and rotates, okay? So at any given time, any given song, any city, any country, any day, it, the focal point for each song is different. For the hardcore fans who buy Metallica bootlegs, a special section of seats, the taper section, allows fans to bring tape decks and video cameras to record the show. It's a move that flies in the face of the conventional wisdom that bootlegging hurts legitimate record sales. There is one other band that does it, and look, look where they're at. <laughs> one of the biggest bands around now. That's a grateful day for you people who don't know. With so many changes to their usual show structure, particularly the stage, there was a little trepidation at the final rehearsal. I, I think half the battle is, is going out there and seeing it right now. I mean, it physically being there. I mean, we've come a long way with it. Now, now we just have to get used to playing on it. <laughs> like right now, there's so many Things that we're throwing ourselves out into with this no opening act, kits in the middle, a movie before we're playing, it's like two drum kits, this really weird shaped stage. It's like, we don't know what the hell is gonna happen, but at least we have the balls to try it. You know, it's almost 
was at that tour that everybody said it shouldn't happen just because it's too cool a tour. And uh, we have such a camaraderie with the Metallica guys. So it's sort of like this little mini army that's just going against all standards and all the rules or history. What you basically have on here is you have two full you know, you have all the steel and all that crap, but you have two bands that have basically each their own production. We have our whole thing with the mirrors and the snake pit and drum kits and flip around everywhere and all that kind of crap. We wanted to do this right and give the kids, you know, I mean, we could have saved hundreds of thousands of dollars a week if we had had the same stage set up, both of us, the same lighting rig, the same everything. We didn't feel it would be right for Metallica to come and do like a normal open, like an opening act amount of playing time on stage that would really be unfair to their show and would like you know kind of make them look smaller and we didn't want to do that we wanted them to look as big as they are haven't noticed i ain't playing a guitar tonight <coughs> For obvious reasons. In Montreal was just really creepy. Nothing against the people in Montreal. We had a great time hanging out there. I think it was the building itself. It was like the first show back after like four dates. So Axel had some problems with his throat and so on. So we were back again, Montreal. Everybody was very excited to be back and playing. And for the first hour and 10 minutes or whatever we played, I mean, it was great. We were really, it was really good for us. It was looking to be one of the best ones. Basically, our pyro guy will come in and say, uh, you know, if something's going to be changed. If not, he won't come in there and everything will be the same every night. He came in and said, okay, the fade to black stuff is going to be out on the wings, so don't go out there. I said, okay. Uh, but he didn't specify that it was in addition to what's already there. So I walked from the wings right onto where one of them was and just. The last couple seconds before the queue, I knew. It was just eerie. I could just tell that he shouldn't be standing where he was standing. And then the, the flame from hell just comes. It's like moving down the stage, eight feet tall, and just completely engulfs him. We got a friend of ours, brought him out from a band called Metal Church. He's filling in for us. I want you to give uh, Mr. John Marshall a hand over here. All right. <laughs> So how are you? What what is the prognosis <laughs> with your arm? Let's get that over with. It sucks. I mean, it's burnt. <laughs> uh, well, it was, it's, it was minor second degree. Most of this arm, a little on the back of this one, but the back of the hand is where it was, was the worst. I mean, right here is okay. It's where my wristband was. So <laughs> I'm all right here. <laughs> Should have a longer wristband. Hey, hey! We're not backstage, we're under the stage and uh, Lars is actually warming up for the gig tonight so he wasn't able to be here to show us around himself but I've got the next be best person and that is Ian Jeffrey who is Metallica's tour manager. So how long have you been working with Metallica? Ever since I've been second best to Lars. <laughs> how long? About four and a half years, middle of 88. Okay and right now we are, uh, as I said, under the stage. This is all Kirk's equipment this here. This James here. This okay. is where James lives when he's... Uh, uh, down here when there's other stuff going on he doesn't need to be up and Andy here tuning his guitars and we, we can't get over here I don't think but Lars lives here as well and then Kirk is over the back and over to the left here we have Jason. It's, it's a great atmosphere down here actually I'm going to show you something which we're probably not allowed to show you but the whole of the um, ceiling is plastered with pictures of um, scantily clad young ladies so uh, there you go that's what uh, Metallica <laughs> young ladies so uh, let's move on a bit actually you're going to take us down to the snake pit the so snake pit, yeah. if you want to follow us okay uh, we're, this is 
where Lars's drum kit is being set yeah, up. And before the show, everything is hidden. The uh, stage is completely clean, and this is uh, where Lars's kit belongs. And it moves about a bit, does it? Well, who told you that? <laughs> we mustn't give all the secrets <laughs> away before the show. Let's um, go to the snake pit now. Okay, we're heading. Are you still okay? We're, all right, we're heading up to the famous snake pit now, and this is actually uh, the diamonds in the centre of the stage. Um, so, how many people can fit in here? Uh, well, it varies, but for the UK and Europe, basically 85 people. 85. Uh huh. Just because of the health and the fire rules here in Europe, they're a bit more stricter than America. And what's the sound like when you're actually in the middle of the stage? You can see hanging above us here, we've got two monitors here which give a complete mix of what's going on out front. And there's a small monitor here to see what's going on in the video screens out front. Okay. So how did you get into the snake pit? Oh, uh, friends, friends. Friends of friends, there you go, that's how you get in there. Let's carry on. Should we, uh, will you take us up onto the stage? Absolutely, let's go okay. Okay, um, this is one of the ramps up to the stage and uh, I feel very pri privileged to be doing this, to run up one of these rock and roll <laughs> walkways. Ian is still with me, we're actually going to go up onto the stage. So, um, maybe you could tell us a little bit about um, how long it takes to set the stage up. Well, as you see, basically this is our shape of diamond stage here at the NEC. Our uh, crew moved in at 7 o'clock this morning. They get finished about five o'clock, so we're looking at nine hours to get the whole thing ready. Wow. And then take it all down and move on to the next venue. It's always a bit quicker going out, about two and a half, three hours on the way out and then onto the next venue. That's correct. Okay, well, uh, let's go down onto the stage a bit more. Come on. Let's see some of the Metallica fans. album and home video tell us a little bit about those. um let's see where do we start i think the best way to is, is some of you guys out there might be familiar with a couple years ago queen so i did like this little like package kind of a mm -hmm. box thing that had some videos and cds or cassettes whatever configuration yep. that you bought that's the idea we're going with we're not trying to do like you know a single album a double album a single video a double video and a another CD with a different cover and three other songs it's like one package if you want this thing you have one option you buy the whole thing it's gonna have about um, it's gonna have about two I'm seeing all these people everywhere and I'm sitting here waving to everybody it's gonna have uh, um, a whole show on video from San Diego early in the tour and about half hour of stuff from the Justice tour from Seattle in 89 of all the songs that we didn't play and so on on this tour and it's got a whole show on CDs and and cassettes or whatever configuration that you buy from Mexico City mm -hmm. later in the tour and you can see it's two different set lists it's two different you know we're playing a lot better obviously as the tour moves on and so on it's going to be you know have the usual 712 live photos and <laughs> all that kind of stuff so it's going to be a great the definitive live Metallica pack it's, it's not going to be so much for all the people that just know Metallica from you know Enter Sandman or whatever but it's going to be for the fans that have been with us for the last 12 years and so on, I think for them it's going to be something that they really get off on. Okay, well we'll talk about that a little bit more in the next segment, but right now we're going to show you a little bit more of Metallica as they are at their best. Here they are live. Forever, 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 forever,
and welcome back to the final part of the Headbangers Ball Metallica Man of War Marathon. Now, over the Metallica leg of our marathon, we've been bringing you right up to date with the band. We crossed over to San Francisco for that exclusive studio report, and of course, we brought you that special competition to win one of those limited edition box sets. Metallica, Live Shit, Binge and Purge. But to finish off tonight's program, we're actually going to dig deep back into Metallica's past with MTV's Metallica Rockumentary. Now this program traces the history of the band since their formation in San Francisco in the early 80s, right up to the Metallica album. So here we go, MTV's Metallica Rockumentary. There you go, that was our Metallica rockumentary rounding off tonight's special edition of Headbangers Ball. I do hope you've enjoyed our Metallica Man of War Marathon and thanks for staying with us over the last two and a half hours. Well done to you. Now, uh, we're just about rounding up this edition of Headbangers Ball tonight. i uh, very quickly tell you what we've got coming up in the next few weeks. Of course, it is big November, and that means you can look forward to lots of big shows, lots of special names. And of course, on the 28th of November, you should definitely watch out for our Sepultura special from Lisbon in Portugal. So watch out for that. Right now, though, it's time for me to relax and go and have a party right here in Germany. So I'll say good night, and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.